Oh man, does that one feel rough? Ooh, no, he's not a monster, but that's a good fish. Look at that thing choke down his throat. Welcome to the North Roads Outdoors video blog. Tory Roads here, and we have got some awesome feeding activity going on with some largemouth bass on a new lake that me and Nate have never been to before, but we've got a massive, I mean a massive amount of bait fish that are just pinned and schooled up and corralled right up against a weed line here. They are putting on a feed bag like you wouldn't believe. Man, that's a good one right there. That spinner bait's starting to get some activity here. That's a good fish. Probably three pounder anyway. He was right on that weed line. Get in here. He's got some fresh gills in there, I would say. That's a solid, thick fish. We're up in the Twin Cities area near Chanhassen, Chaska, Shakopee area. There are a ton of lakes in this area. We've never been to this one before. We like it so far. So to give you an idea what this looks like on the graph, you can see that we got 11 feet of water and there's not much down there. We got a bunch of weeds right here that are gonna top out. That's about eight foot deep. We're starting to get down into 10 you're gonna get less and less weed growth and eventually they're gonna stop completely when you get into that 11 feet. But what you have to do is get yourself right on the edge of this clumpy stuff, right in this range here, and just start flipping that area between say that eight and a half feet and 10 feet mark. That is where these fish are gonna pile up. All right, so what we're looking for, Tori just showed you on the graph what it looks like. Picture in your mind a wall down there and it's only gonna be about four feet high, three, four feet high, that's where these weeds are, are, that's how tall these weeds are. And what you wanna do is position your boat right on the edge so you're paralleling it. You make your cast so it's dropped, so your bait's dropping right down that weed line. That's where those fish are set up to ambush. So you find that weed line, and electronics is key here, especially right now, because you can't see the tops of these weeds. You can't see where they are, they're too far down. You just gotta look at your graph. But make that cast right on that weed line. Let your bait fall on the slack line and watch your line. I can't stress that enough. It's key because a lot of times these fish are going to hit that bait on the fall when it's coming down the action of that bait and they're going to suck it in and you watch your line and it'll just snap. When you see that, set the hook. It's a fish. In the spring, of course, these fish are up along the bank spawning, right? So a lot of the fish early parts of May or, or late May, early June are gonna be up on the bank. Later on, these fish are gonna to start to slide out. And what the real key is here is in these lakes that have a lot of bluegills. End of May, beginning part of June, those bluegills are shallow spawning too. And the bass are still up there and they're feeding on those bluegills that are spawning. But you get into mid to late June, that's when these bluegills start to slide out. You'll see these pockets of bluegills exploding out here in 10 feet of water. Well, those bass have followed them and that's what you're really trying to target. They're eating the bluegills, and a lot of the bigger fish are gonna be out deep on these weed lines. That's where you gotta look for them. The thing with weed lines is, is the fish, especially on these clear lakes, the big ones, that's where they live. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, you can catch fish shallow. Yeah, there's big fish shallow. The majority of the big fish are deep. They're on these weed lines. They're on the deeper structure, especially when you get to midsummer. So when you get bit, stop. Throw your buoy out and hit that spot many times because when you find one, a lot of times you find a bunch of them this time of year. Because that weed line, it may look like it's straight, but there may be a little point in it that's holding some fish. And that one little spot can hold some, can hold a bunch of them. Hey, when we're talking about weed line fishing, this is the kind of weed that you're after right here. Nice brand new green weeds. This stuff here is milfoil. Nothing slimy about it, so it's not gonna stick to your bait. It's not gonna stick to your sinker. And this is the kind of stuff that when your bait gets hung up in it, 
you're going to be able to pop your bait loose from it. And uh, just like Nate was saying, when you pop it loose, that's what, what they're, uh, when they're going to react on it. But that's the kind of weed that you need to look for right there. Good green milfoil. That's a good one. Man, did he swallow that thing or what? Get in here. Nice. It's a good solid three pounder right there. I mean, when they get going on that bluegill bite on those weed lines, there's no doubt. Let's talk about the equipment that we're using for this kind of fishing. And I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to talk about what it is I'm using today because there's a lot of choices that you can make for this. But for example, we're, pull we're pulling these fish out of nine feet of water. So you want to pick up a lot of line and really drive that hook home. So I've got a seven and a half foot flipping stick and it's a heavy action rod. And then I've got 16 pound fluorocarbon line and I'm going to be using a three eighths ounce weight and 3 8 is about as light as I'll go because I want that thing getting down into that 9 feet pretty quick. And a lot of these fish are going to be feeding and reacting and you don't need to go any lighter than that typically. Just a creature bait. Keep your colors simple. This is just basically what they call a magic cross swirl. It's one of my favorites. But your blacks or your green pumpkins, anything like that is going to be a simple bait to use. And I use a really strong extra wide gap hook that I use the uh, super line type of hook. It's a really strong hook. So that's your equipment for this weed line fishing for largies. Every spring, Tori and I itch just waiting for this to happen. And we talk about it starting in about May, reliving stories from old tournaments and just fishing here in general. It's just a timing thing. When is it going to happen? Now it's on. Yeah. That's a five pounder. I was just talking about those crushers. Look where he's got that baby. Need some pictures with that bad boy. Look at that. From my fingertips to my shoulder, almost. That's a giant. Man, when you get these fish jacked up on that bluegill bite, it can be a lot of fun. I mean, my choice is to flip these things out of that deep water, but there are times you can catch them on spinner baits, swim jigs, plastic worms, little creature baits like this. Man, they are healthy, thick, solid fish. We are in the Twin Cities area in the metro fishing little tiny loaded up largemouth lakes. We are mid-June. The weed line bite is on. That's your North Roads Outdoors video blog. And we are out.